In this video, I talk about unimolecular reactions in chemical kinetics. In particular, I talk about Lindemann mechanism, Hinshelwood theory, RRK theory, and RRKM theory. Uh, so let's look at a unimolecular reaction. Well, we have just one reactant. Well, naively, we'd say the reaction rate R is equal to the reaction rate constant K times A to the power of 1. And K uh, can be obtained uh, using Arrhenius equation if you know the activation energy. Uh, A is the exponential um, pre-exponential factor. Also, you may use Irene equation. Uh, these two are fairly similar to each other. It's just in this uh, pre-exponential factor, there is entropic uh, effect being included. Uh, over here, this is activation energy uh, defined by Arrhenius. Uh, this is uh, the Gibbs energy of activation. All right, but uh, if you use this equation, sometimes uh, the prediction and the experimental data do not match. Uh, sometimes people find that uh, the uh, unimolecular reaction rate is proportional to the concentration of the reactant uh, to the power of 2, uh, especially when the concentration of uh, this uh, reactant is low. So when this A is low, uh, people find the reaction rate is proportional to A to the power of 2 uh, instead of A to the power of 1. So Lindemann proposed uh, this mechanism. So we're going to talk about Lindemann first. Uh, he published uh, this mechanism back in 1922. So he was uh, theorizing this. So maybe we need to have uh, two A's to collide with each other. And you get energized A. So this is energized All right, you need an energized A to uh, be converted to P. That does make sense. All right, he uh, neglected the reaction uh, from P to A, assuming uh, from P back to A star. Uh, let's say this reaction rate is really small. And he used uh, this mechanism to explain many experimental data, and uh, turns out it's much better uh, then uh, this equation, when the concentration of A is low. Now let's look at this uh, Lindemann mechanism. He used the steady state approximation uh, for this A star. That means this is zero. And this is also just uh, K1 A squared minus K negative 1 A star times A and then minus uh, K2 times A star. So look, A star can be uh, consumed in two elementary reactions. And when you have this equation, you can easily uh, estimate A star. A star is going to be just uh, simply K1 A squared. On the bottom, you have uh, K minus 1 A plus K2. All right, and then the reaction rate is simply just K2 times A star. And you get uh, K1, K2, A squared on top. Uh, on the bottom, it's this. Uh, it's not a simple first order or second order reaction. So again, when A is low, uh, we compare these two terms on the bottom. We neglect uh, this k minus 1 times a, uh, we find that r is simply k1 times 
uh, a squared. Well, uh, that actually tells us uh, the rate limiting step uh, is this k1 step. Uh, but when a is high, when the concentration of a is high, uh, r is uh, the reaction rate. Uh, is we're gonna uh, neglect uh, this k2 term on the bottom, and it's gonna be uh, k1 k2 over k minus one times a to the power of one. So it's gonna be first order. Okay, and it's verified uh, in various experiments. When the concentration of the reactant is low, it's a second order reaction. When its concentration is high, um, uh, this reaction becomes a first order reaction. Uh, however, uh, it turns out when you use uh, this uh, Lindemann mechanism to make predictions to get the rate of the production of A star, okay, the rate of the production of the energized A. All right, and the energized A is just A star, all right, uh, was uh, uh, severely underestimated, underestimated. All right, so uh, uh, this uh, um, Hinshelwood uh, proposed that maybe this uh, A star. Okay, now let's move on to Hinshelwood. Okay, proposed that uh, there are multiple degrees of freedom. In A star. Uh, in other words, uh, if you have A star, uh, it may have uh, several vibration modes, and each vibration mode may hold some energy. All right, let's uh, uh, look at one example. Let's say we have a triatomic uh, A, uh, which is nonlinear. Uh, this uh, has three vibrational modes. All right, so. Um, Hinshelwood says that, well, uh, if uh, there's a reactive uh, vibrational mode, uh, if the reactive vibrational mode uh, gets three energy quanta, uh, the desired reaction may occur. All right, and then he proposed that you don't really need to uh, have this uh, reactive vibration mode to get three energy quanta. It's possible if you have three vibration modes, A, B, C, well, it's possible that you can uh, uh, have this uh, vibration mode A with three energy quanta. All right, three, zero, zero, or B has uh, three energy quanta, or C has three energy quanta. So in this case, uh, you're going to say, well, A, B, and C uh, may exchange energy freely. So if you look at the first case or second case, well, uh, the excess energy may be excessive energy in A or in B, or maybe transfer to C, right? So and then C is energized enough. Of course, there are other uh, arrangements. You can have uh, like 210, 201. Uh, you can have uh, uh, 102, uh, 120. You can have 021. All right, you can have uh, uh, 102, 012. And you can have even 111. Let's say, well, after collision uh, between two A's, uh, you can produce uh a plus A, and then you get A star plus A, right? And this one has a uh, one energy quanta, quantum uh, in each of the three uh, vibration mode. Well, that means uh, this A star does have enough energy. So for A and B and C to exchange energy freely, uh, they have to be unharmonic. Uh, Oscillators. All right. So if you have uh, only harmonic oscillators, well, the energy will not be shared with other vibration modes. 
All right, so this is、uh, Hinshelwood's、uh, theory,、uh, which explains why the experimental、uh, rate of production of a star is faster、uh, than what Lindemann predicted. Now let's、uh, look at the RRK theory. So RRK theory was developed by、uh, Rice and Ramsberger、uh, in 1927. And independently、uh, by Castle in 1928, so it's called RRK theory. I will briefly explain what RRK theory is. Well,、uh, in Lindemann's、uh, mechanism,、uh, when you have energized A, it can be converted to P. All right, with K two. However, in our K theory, well,、uh, they propose that、uh, this A star will become a double dagger first, and then this A double dagger will、uh, be converted to P. All right, so、uh, I'm gonna call this K two, and I'm gonna call this maybe K two double dagger or K two double dagger or、uh, K double dagger.、Uh, so this is just energized. Uh, energized, and、uh, this is called a、uh, critically activated uh, with uh, the excessive energy、uh, in the、uh, in the right、uh, reactive. Vibrational mode. All right, so it cannot be just any vibrational mode. You need to have、um, uh, this uh, energy, excessive energy,、uh, distributed among A, B, and C. Well, if C vibrational mode C is the reactive mode, well, somehow you need to uh, have uh, this、uh, taken into account. All、right again,、uh, if you have A, B, and C, okay, so you have energized. Oh, I'm sorry, I use A for the molecule, and then I use、uh, vibrational mode A, B, C. Okay, so this A is different from the A. I'm sorry about that. So、uh, if you do this again,、uh, you can have three energy uh, quanta uh, stored in vibration mode A, or three in B. Or three in C, etc., etc., or just one, one, one. Of course,、uh, you have、uh, three ways of distribution here. One way of distribution here, and in the middle there are six、uh, different ways of distribution,、uh, distributing the energy, the three quanta. And uh, uh, in this case,、uh, if you look at this number, only one of the、uh, ten arrangements. Uh, may uh, result in the reaction. All right, because、uh, we said it before,、uh, C is the reactive vibrational mode. All right, C is the reactive vibrational mode. So uh, somehow uh, the energy will have to be given to C so that this、uh, reactive vibrational mode has enough energy.、Uh, in this case, I'm just. Making up a number, you need all three energy quantum、uh, quanta to uh, uh, to have uh, this uh, a double dagger being formed. So in this a double dagger,、uh, the reactive、uh, vibrational mode C has all three、uh, energy quanta. So in a double dagger, the reactive vibrational mode C has all three energy quanta. Okay, what about this A star? A star is the energized A. Well, it's just we know、uh, it's energized. It has、uh, three more、uh, energy quanta than regular A's, but you know this energy may be distributed, you know, everywhere. Among the three vibrational modes A, B, or C, so from this A star to a double dagger again, you need to look at、uh, the redistribution of the energy quanta. 
All right, so this is the uh, essence of the RRK theory. Uh, later, uh, we're going to derive uh, this uh, RRK theory uh, more quantitatively. We'll also derive this uh, Hinshelwood uh, theory more quantitatively. But for now, I'm just talking about uh, the essence of uh, the Hinshelwood theory, RRK theory. And now RKM theory, RKM. All right, so if you look at RKM theory, you can see uh, Marcus uh, is the M. He published this paper in 1952. Uh, it's uh, 24 years after uh, Castle's paper, 25 years after uh, Rice and Ramsberg's paper. All right, and uh, Marcus made a significant con contribution uh, to better RRK theory. Uh, why is that? In RRK theory, uh, RRK assumes all three vibrational modes have the same frequency. Well, that's weird. You know, uh, when you have a molecule with multiple vibrational modes, uh, very likely you have uh, large uh, vibrational wave numbers, you have smaller wave, uh, vibrational wave numbers, for example, water. Uh, I think you have, uh, you know, two vibrational modes. Uh, with uh, more than 3,000 uh, wave numbers and, and one bending mode with only 1,500 uh, mode. Right, if you have methane and then you have bond stretching, you have bending, you have uh, uh, vibrational mode with very small wave number that correspond to the change of the dihedral angle. So uh, R in RKM theory. Uh, so Marcus, so this Marcus, uh, Propose that you know we can actually derive the equations uh, without the assumption that all vibrational modes have the same frequency. All right, so let me give you an example. Let's say we have a triatomic molecule again, triatomic. All right, and uh, I'm gonna uh, do this molecule, uh, three atoms. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, I used the, uh, ABC again, so alpha, beta, and gamma, three atoms. All right, it's three atoms. You have alpha, you have beta, you have gamma, and then you have three vibrational modes, right? Uh, mode A, mode B, and mode C. All right, let's say it's easier to break uh, this uh, beta and the gamma bond. So we need enough energy in this uh, vibrational mode C. Uh, do remember the vibrational modes are delocalized uh, over the entire molecule, but you know sometimes it's uh, more uh, concentrated on a special uh, one particular bond. So let's just, you know, assuming this uh, beta gamma has, uh, uh, let's say, uh, 1,000 centimeter uh, wave numbers, and this is 2,000 wave numbers, and this is 3,000 wave numbers. All right, and then, you know, you just need uh, uh, 1,000 wave numbers, uh, that amount of energy to break the uh, beta uh, gamma bond. So uh, what Marcus did was, you know, he was able to take the different wave numbers or different vibrational frequencies into account uh, in his equation. And on top of that, uh, it's actually pretty important because, uh, you know, in this case, you just need a excessive energy of uh, 1,000 wave numbers to uh, break the beta-gamma bond for the reaction to occur, right? You don't need 3,000, you just need 1,000. And in addition to uh, this, allowing the vibration modes to have different frequencies. Okay, Marcus did another thing. He included the uh, rotational um, uh, rotational motions, right? And it just can be uh, distributed to the uh, rotational degrees of freedom. All right, the molecule can uh, rotate about uh, the x, y, and z directions, right? So uh, this is x, this is y, this is z, and the molecule can do rotations. All right, so uh, he proposed that, you know, why don't we look at the rotational uh, motions as well? I believe uh, if you look at uh, rotation, um, it's j times j plus 1 times h bar squared over 2i, and then you have 3i's, you have i about the x direction, you have 
i about y direction you you have i about the z direction so again you have uh, you know 3d okay actually there are three terms here all right it's just uh, i'm too lazy to write out the three terms okay yeah and this j can be uh the quantum number for the rotation about the x y or z direction all right, Jx does not have to be equal to Jy. Jy does not have to be equal to J sub Z. Uh, that means, well, uh, the rotational quantum numbers uh, can be different. Of course, they can be the same, but they can also be different. And again, using this uh, molecule as an example, you know, we can have, uh, you know, uh, let's say J plus... Oh, uh, by the way, this is often... Uh, defined to be HCB. Well, it's just uh, for convenience. Uh, quantum chemists often define this H bar squared over 2i as HCB. And I is uh, the uh, moment of inertia, and B is the rotational constants about x, y, or z direction. So you have actually three equations here. Uh, so again, I'm just too lazy to write out all three equations. So you have J times J plus 1 HCBX. Uh, you have J times J plus 1 times HCBY. Uh, you have uh, J uh, sub Z, J sub Z plus 1 HCBZ. All right, so those are the rotational energy. And then you have vibrational energy. Right. Also, you have nx plus half times h nu x. Oh, maybe we should use abc uh, for the three vibrational modes just to be consistent. Right. h nu b, and then we have n sub c plus half h nu uh, c. So na, nb, nc are the uh, vibrational quantum numbers. Uh, this uh, Jx, Jy, Jz are, are rotational quantum numbers. All right, so uh, Marcus assumed that the total energy can be distributed uh, into the uh, rotational modes and vibrational modes. Uh, what about the uh, translational modes? They actually cancel. So if you look at the... Um, uh, translational energy, uh, if you compute this, the average translation energy of A, of A star, of A double dagger, assuming they are in the same container, uh, the translational uh, energy contribution are just uh, canceled. So don't you don't have to worry about it. And sometimes you have uh, so-called hindered rotors, and then that's going to be a little bit more complicated. Hindered uh, rotors. I'll give you a very simple example. Uh, let's look at this ethane molecule, right? Oh, uh, you have two carbons. You have uh, three hydrogen on one side, three hydrogen atoms on the other side, and this rotation is considered a vibrational mode. Okay, when you have this uh, C two, uh, C two H six, right? But uh, when this uh, carbon and the carbon bond is energized, uh, this bond is uh, elongated, right? So you get something like this. It's kind of elongated. And you have basically a CH3 on one side, another CH3 on the other side. So uh, really, it's going to be uh, the rotation of this dashed line is considered a hindered uh, rotation of the uh, methyl groups, of the CH3 groups. All right, when the carbon-carbon bond is really long, uh, you don't call that vibrational mode. It's uh, a hindered rotation. All right, so Marcus took this into account as well. And again, I just gave you a more qualitative um, introduction of uh, the uh, Lindemann mechanism, uh, Hinshawood theory, uh, and the RK theory. 
and RKM theory. Uh, when you look at the RKM theory, um, uh, we have uh, low pressure limit. Uh, we have high pressure limit. Uh, we have something in the middle, of course. You know, uh, at high pressure limit, uh, this RKM theory is equivalent to the transition state theory. All right, so we can prove that later.